Hi, I'm Reed Peterson and welcome to Grief Refuge. Grief Refuge is a safe and sacred place to hold your grief, to honor it, to feel it, and to heal it. This podcast isn't your typical talk about grief podcast. It's more of a what to do with grief podcast. Grief Refuge is about being in your heart and honoring your truth. I'm very grateful you're here with me today. I so look forward to helping in whatever way I can, hoping that you feel more comforted, supported, and perhaps even educated about your own personal grief experience. So if it's possible at this time, I'm going to ask that you stop multitasking. The reason why is the information here can sometimes bring up some very strong emotions, and I just want to make sure that you're in the best mode of your own self-care feeling more comfortable, feeling more relaxed, and feeling more safe in your own personal sacred grief. Today, I'm very looking forward to sharing with you some personal experience of what I've seen happening on Facebook group posts, specifically groups that are meant for grief support. I've titled this episode in the form of a question. The question is, is expressing grief on Facebook helpful. Enjoy. Some friends of mine recently lost a baby. It was devastating news. But the only way I knew about it was because they posted something on Facebook. In fact, they were quite transparent and very open about their loss and they shared so many paragraphs about what happened on their profile page. Now, as I read this post, I thought to myself how sad and painful their loss must be. I also thought, why the heck are they sharing something as deep and personal and painful like this on Facebook? I kid you not, this was a very intimate sharing. This was their story filled with so many details around a 72 hour period. I got to a point that after reading it for a while, I realized I was even holding my breath. There was so much loss and there was beauty and it was all in front of my eyes on this damn Facebook page. And then I came to this moment where everything just sank in. I had all this information about their loss and I hadn't even talked to them. When I realized that, I began to feel sick to my stomach. I thought to myself, this is just wrong. News like this shouldn't be shared this way. This is just way too personal. And I'm so much more comfortable being with them, listening, empathizing, even crying together. But you know what? This is life now. We've got our pandemic, everyone's still busy, and we've got social media as the norm for communication. This is how our world works. Technology is at our fingertips, and it's just too convenient and too easy to broadcast the events in your life on social media to, air quotes around this folks, stay in touch. But are you staying in touch? I would argue it's more like keeping tabs on people. We've all heard the term Facebook stalking. It's so easy to scroll through a Facebook wall, learn about what's happening to other people, and not even comment and move on. Okay, at this point, I've got a question for you. How comfortable are you? with sharing personal and intimate information on Facebook, when you know that many people, perhaps hundreds of people, could read this and not even respond. For me, no thank you. That's just too awkward. And if I were sharing something very personal, I need to hear from people in order for me to feel the support, that support that I'm looking for. 
Okay, and then there's this thing about text. Just text in general. I'm not talking about text messages, but I'm talking about text on screens. We all know it's too easy to hide behind text. There's so many ways for posts to be filtered and shared in certain ways that can be misleading, they can be biased, they can even be untruthful. And how would you know? Because it's all text. Coming back to the friends who lost their baby. After I got over my uncomfortable feeling about this Facebook being the source of my information and finding out about their loss, I began to wonder what their intention was for sharing such a deeply personal thing on social media, and in this case on Facebook. So were they saving time by making an announcement to the masses? Were they seeking reinforcement or validation for their loss? Were they wanting to feel more seen and heard? What brought more sadness to me was that I don't know what their intention was, and I likely never will. I could read through several hundred comments or whatever people posted in response to them to help better understand. I could call them and I could ask them, or I could even bring it up the next time we're in each other's presence. But you know what? I'm not going to do any of those things. And there's also this strong likelihood that the next time we talk to each other, they're not going to mention it either. So here I am. I've got this personal information, and I'm not really sure what to do with it because it doesn't feel right for me to comment on the source, to comment on Facebook. Man, how strange our world is. All right. I've got a confession to make. You know this already, but I'm going to own it here. I realize that I'm of the strong opinion that expressing grief on Facebook is not as helpful as it would be to share with someone live or in person. So, yes, that may be a little old school, and I'm owning that. However, I have seen hundreds of Facebook posts from people who are deeply pained by their loss. But then they get these comments from all these other people that one, they don't know. And two, the comments are sharing platitudes, judgments, or even cliches as a way of showing their support or relating. Man, I see that and I just, my heart sinks into my stomach. Almost every time I ask myself, how helpful are these comments to the person who posted? Now, I'm fortunate because in my work, I get the opportunities to ask people. And nearly every time I ask someone about sharing their grief on Facebook, they tell me it doesn't help. They tell me they feel more lonely because what they were hoping for as a means of support wasn't expressed to them from what was shared in their comments. Now, I don't know about you, but that just brings such a sad feeling to me. We live in this world of technological convenience. All the texting, voice dictation, 10 second videos, these are what's common and what's normal now. This is the way we communicate. And with that convenience, there's a price to pay. Why do you like listening to this podcast? Just the fact alone that you hear my voice, you can hear tone in my expression. You can't see my body language, but you can almost sense it by the way I say something. Without any of that, and having only text as something to read, it can get quite easy to assume. It can also get quite easy to receive these words through your perception, your filtered perception. It's almost like looking for what you want to hear, or in this case, looking for what you want to see. Again, there's no way to know 
how someone is voicing what they're actually communicating because it's all in the form of text. Now, having mentioned all this, I want to emphasize the use of caution should you choose to share your grief on Facebook. Facebook, as with other social media platforms, is a very convenient way to communicate something. In regards to grief, it's easier than ever to find grief support groups on Facebook to share parts of your story and to share more about your loss. People join these grief support groups on Facebook to feel validated, to feel a part of something, to know that they're not so alone in their grief. But does all that come back to you? If you were to post something, who's going to respond? And if they do respond, what will they write? Like I said before, I actually am a member of these groups. No, I don't post, but I listen. And what I find extremely courageous is that a griever who joins one of these groups, they'll type out a very personal message and share something very deep, very vulnerable, and very painful. And then they press that post button. You know why that's courageous? Because there's so much trust put into the other members of the group. And yet, no one really knows each other. They just trust that these other members, they've also lost someone special. They'll understand. They'll comment with words of support. And they'll help you feel comforted in some of your most painful and vulnerable moments. That's a lot of trust. But ironically, these posts, I see these on a daily basis, several. The comments, they just don't support and comfort the person who posted it. Unfortunately, the comments are filled with people sharing more of their own personal story. And I totally get that. But at the same time, how is that supporting the person who posted Now, I trust that everybody's intentions are good. But here we are, assumptions and total miscommunication being exchanged. Let me give you an example. Now, imagine if you're in a situation where you're not just socially distant from your loved ones, but you're physically distant. They live very far away. Right now, you're more alone than ever and you lean towards Facebook to feel your connection. You post something about the loss of your special person and no one comments. How is that going to feel? So that's one way that grief can feel more hurtful by expressing it on Facebook. Or what if for that same post, you got comments that were filled with things like, Sending virtual hugs, or sending good vibes, or hugs and prayers. Comments such as these, they can leave a griever feeling invisible, insignificant, or even uncared for. Where I advise more caution in sharing your grief on Facebook is knowing your intentions, but more importantly, being very clear about your expectations. It's common to hope for lots of comments or these days emojis to help you feel more comforted. There's nothing wrong with that intention, but be very careful about your expectations. If you expect dozens or more comments and responses, it's really going to hurt if you don't get any of them. It's also going to hurt if you expect real acknowledgement and connection. Somehow, through the evolution of Facebook, there's now this perception that you're going to get that. But we know, in reality, that only happens a small percentage of the time. Okay, more generally, here's what I'm going to finish by saying. It's very common 
to feel alone in your grief. In the past, the more common ways to feel supported was to do some grief counseling or join a bereavement support group. But now people are finding grief support groups on Facebook. Although Facebook groups can provide a convenient platform to share your grief, please use caution. Be conscientious about your intentions and be very clear about your expectations. It's very easy to feel more hurt when your post isn't acknowledged the way you hoped for or you get responses full of platitudes, cliches, or superficial substance. Please use caution when expressing your grief on Facebook. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. It's such an honor to hold space for your healing. It's such an honor to share grief-related education. We all know grief is complicated, so the more we can learn about it, the better we understand these strong emotions and these strong feelings going on inside of us. If you found this to be helpful, I have a favor to ask. Can you please share this podcast with someone? And I'm going to give you 100 bonus points if you're willing to leave me a rating and review. Leaving a rating and review will help the education shared here be more communicated with others. That's just the way the podcast platforms work. And before we say goodbye today, please know that I'm available to provide more support should you need it. It's very simple to reach me. Just visit griefrefuge.com. Thank you. Take care. Keep honoring your grief. Be kind to yourself and talk to you soon.